Hi there, this is a quadratic expressions and algebraic fractions video looking at the difference of two squares. Difference of two squares. Now, here's we're asked to expand some brackets here with the same terms in them, one with a plus and one with a minus. A special thing happens here, and it's quite a nice shortcut rule if we learn it and memorize it. We're looking to split the first bracket, expand each section, and collect like terms, just like we've been doing with binomial products from a previous video. So let's have a look at what happens here. If we split the first bracket here and have a times a minus b, and b times a minus b, a special thing happens to the two middle terms. Let's have a look. We get a squared by going a times a there. We get a minus a b. That's a times minus b ends up being minus a b. When we start expanding the second bracket though, we get b times a or a times b. We're allowed to switch the order there without any problem. And then we have a b times a minus b. Plus times a minus makes a minus and b times b makes b squared. Now let's have a look at those two middle terms, which are like terms. They've both got the same letters and powers there. But we have a one, one of them's a minus term and the other one's a plus term. They're opposites of each other. So guess what happens when we add them together? Just like when we add minus 6 and plus 6, they end up cancelling each other out. And that leaves us just with a squared minus b squared. So that's pretty cool. Really nice shortcut here. When you notice that you're multiplying a couple of brackets, they've got exactly the same items in them, but one of them's got a plus between them and one of them's got a minus between them. You can apply this difference of two squares rule. Works out really um, quite a shortcut. So in the end, that's the rule that we're going to have a look at. When we're expanding a plus b or a minus b uh, together, we end up with a squared minus b squared. The first term is getting squared with a minus in between, and the second term's getting squared. Works out nicely. So that's a rule we're going to remember off to the side here. It's a general, general process. Let's have a look at a few examples. Uh, x plus 4, x minus 4. Now if we split the term, and I'll show you the long version of the expansion, but in each case, as you follow that through, we get x squared minus 4x and a plus 4x. Um, we have minus 4, 4 squared at the end there we will notice once again that those two middle terms cancel each other out. We've got a positive term um, that's exactly the same but opposite the, uh, the negative term there, cancelling each other out. So when they disappear, we're left with x squared minus 4 squared, which effectively is the first term squared minus the second term squared. So if we, if we wanted to cut to the chase here, we could just square the first term Put a minus in between and square the second term. That's what we'll move to when we get some trickier ones. So here we've got a first term of 4x and a second term of 3. Let's have a look how it would go if we expanded it normally. Because if you forget this rule, you can always expand it carefully and notice that those two middle terms cancel each other out. It just takes longer, that's all. Once again, we've created, if we expand them carefully, uh, minus 12x plus 12x, they'll cancel each other out, just leaving us with 16x squared minus 9. Now that doesn't seem like it's uh, related to the first term or the second term, but remember, when we square the first term, the, square, the, the first term is 4x times 4x, so that's how we get 16x squared. It's 4x times itself, and then our second term is, is 3. So when we square that, we get... 16x squared minus 9 ends up being in the same sort of process as we saw from the previous example there. So we can just take the first term and square it carefully, multiply it with itself, and then put a minus in between, and then square the second term. Okay, so generally the difference of two squares there, we, we can do it the long way, splitting the first bracket and expanding each section and collecting the like terms, but you'll notice when we try to collect the like terms here, they'll sort of cancel each other out. In the end though, when you've got two sets of brackets, one with a plus in it, one with a minus in, in it, and the rest of it's kind of identical, the terms are identical, you end up with a nice shortcut whereby it's the first term squared minus the second term squared. Saves us a bit of time if we remember that, um, that general rule. Thanks a lot, PeterBlakeMass.com. See you next time.